So you guys know that I use drains in my neck lifts and they're not great for PR, but they're great for a lot of other things. I'm going to show you one reason that I think they are critical for the types of neck lifts that I do, which are very thorough neck lifts. And this reason is that they control dead space and they minimize the rate of seroma. So let's talk about what that means. This is one of my patients. She's from about 15 years ago before I used to uh, utilize drains routinely. And if you look at her, I was planning a brow lift on her, lower lids, lower face neck lift. Um, on her front view, you can see that she stands a good reason for a brow lift, lower lids, lower face neck lift. But look at the amount of excess skin that's going to form here as a result of doing a really nice lower face neck lift, jawline lift. And when we do this lift and get it all put back up, this is what she looks like at one week postoperatively. And I did not use drains on this case. And you may say, wow, she looks amazing. You didn't need the drains. Well, I want you to look at a couple of things critically. So her stitches just came out here at five to five or seven days, so that's pretty common. Um, look how much bruising she has down here, down low. My normal patients these days have basically zero bruising. They swell, but they have basically zero bruising. What's happened here is that the little bits of leaking blood underneath her tissues the serum component is able to be absorbed. It's kind of like if you put tomato juice on a coffee filter. The liquid part went back into the lymphatic system, but the solids, the red blood cells, get left behind. And so that's what's creating this kind of bruisey situation. The other thing I want you to think about is with those solids left behind, the proteins left behind, there is an osmotic force that occurs. So this picture is about seven days after her surgery. Um, she looks to me like a million bucks. I mean, compare that to that. She looks like an absolute million bucks. Um, I think it's just remarkable, and I'm just celebrating. I think it's amazing. Well, guess what happens then a couple days later? She developed this. And what happened is those proteins, those fluids, those leftover red blood cells, they are pulling fluid out of circulation, just like when you put salt onto meat. There's an osmotic draw. It weeps. And so she came in looking great, looking about like this. A couple of days later, she's got not bleeding, but kind of straw-colored, benign, kind of spongy waterbed kind of stuff going on. And at that time, I was not using suction drains. So... I, I did not preempt the little bit of bloody fluid that is making this color and left protein here to pull. That protein pulled in fluid and I brought her in every day or two to suck out the little bit of fluid and try to control it with the pressure dressing. And now I know if I have a seroma, I'd put a suction drain on that. But when seromas form, they typically do this. They irritate the overlying skin. And during the healing process, that overlying skin becomes all crinkly and irritated and tough and wrinkly. I pretty much never see this anymore. So now my one-week post-ops don't have bruising like this. And they don't have invisible trapped proteins underneath here. And so they just don't. I mean, I guess it's technically possible, but I haven't seen one in years. They don't develop these delayed seromas. So what did we do for her? Well, in this case, I had to let this go for many months. I have to let it mature and soften. I'm doing steroid injections. This is before 5 fluorouracil injections were routinely utilized. So I was doing Kenalog injections, time, massage. And I finally got her back to where she was doing really well. This area had softened up really well. And I went right under her chin and actually cut that little bit out in, in the vertical segment right behind her chin. So here's her before. Here's her final after, here's her before, here's her final after. We won this one in the end. Here's her before, here's her final after. I won it in the end, but I did not win it without having to go through a couple months of this kind of stage. And I will tell you, having drains in now for four or five days has practically eliminated this kind of thing. Um, with big lifts, people with lots of loose skin, lots of skin to redrape, and a dissection that has to be big to get a really pretty nice job done. I think drains are absolutely critical. They prevent these types of issues, and God forbid you as a surgeon out there see a delayed seroma. Don't screw around with serial aspiration and pressure dressings. Immediately put a suction drain in 
leave it for three or four days, and it will completely eliminate this irritation that happens after untreated or inadequately treated seromas. I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much.